All right, everybody, uh, here goes nothing. Welcome in. Uh, this is Ryan Scott, the lead columnist for d3hoops.com, and I'm going to try and walk through a mock bracketing process to give you a little insight into how this all works. Um, and uh, I'm doing it solo, which is not my, my best skill, but hopefully we'll be able to get through this pretty quickly, and you can see where geography and all the variables that come into putting a Division three bracket together. We're clearly not Division one, where they can just fly anybody wherever they want to, and they can just seed it nicely, 1 through 16 in each region, and uh, make it all work out nice and fair. Um, in D3, we got a lot of constraints. Uh, the major one being we have to minimize the number of flights that exist. And they changed this year for the, the men's tournament that um, the distance for a flight is 600 miles or more. So as long as teams are within 600 miles, they can bus, which means we can put them into a pod together. I've done some pre-prep on my little spreadsheet here. Um, what I did was I populated this just with data from the D3 bubble site uh, as of Sunday. So a lot of this has changed right now. This is not at all, and let me say this over and over again, this is not a prediction of who will be in the tournament. These are uh, This data will be two weeks old by the time we get to the tournament. All I need are the 64 teams in order to start bracketing them and to show you how this works. So I have uh, over here all the conferences and I used uh, Drew's, that's D3 Bubble, uh, his predictions. And then I used his predictions for the Pool C's as of last Sunday. And then what I did was I randomly inserted six upsets in here because uh, that always happens in, in the tournament. So you have a team here like Endicott that upset Nichols, um, but Nichols ends up getting a Pool C, taking it one, one away from somebody farther down. I just tried to throw a little of, of reality into this when I, when I figured these. And um, I took, uh, thankfully, the men's committee and the women's too, but the men's committee released their top 16 teams uh, as of right now. And so I just started by populating Oshkosh was one, two, three, four, and then going backwards, IWU was five, six, seven, eight. And so we've populated, you see over here, the, these are the would be like one seeds in a bracket, like two seeds in a bracket, like threes and fours. They won't be able to stay here. Um, because of geography, we'll have to move them all around. Um, but that's how I'm going to set it up to start with. And then over here, you'll see one, four, two, three. Those would be the matchups in each first weekend pod as we begin to fill them in. So those teams are all purple over on my list, and they're already crossed out because I have them on the bracket. That's how we keep track of everything. And purple is, of course, the color of D3. Um, over the last 15 years or so, most of the champions uh, in Division Three men's basketball have worn purple, so we call it the color of D3. Um, and then what we've done is just uh, ranked the teams in terms of groupings. So green comes next. These would be the second set. They would be like the number twos, ideally, on these lines here, the number twos in a, in a first weekend pod. They're the second set of 16. Uh, blue becomes the third set of 16, which we would ideally slot into the threes. And then red becomes the lowest brackets that would be slotted into the fours. Again, if everything were perfect. But, of course, it's not. Um, as you'll see, we have, I believe, six teams here that are marked with asterisks. This is Pomona Pitzer, Whitworth, Mary Harden Baylor, Trinity Texas, Chapman, and Linfield. Those teams are marked with asterisks because they cannot drive to any of our current hosts. Um, that would mean you'd have to fly all six of them somewhere on the first weekend, which I'm sure the committee would love to do, uh, but that is not in the budget. Their mandate is to minimize flights. You'll notice Laterno is not on there because Laterno is actually within 600 miles of WashU. So we could potentially drive them up there. That might be something that'll come into play. We'll have to look and, and figure that out. Um, if this were just sort of two and two, that we had four teams that couldn't fly anywhere, usually they would just all clump them together and then you're guaranteed to only have one flight the, the next weekend. Um, but in this case, we've got six of them. So what we're going to have to do is figure out hosts. And we know um, based on, well, six teams. So here we've got two in California, two in the Northwest, two in Texas, or potentially three in Texas. So really what we're going to have to do is guarantee that Mary Harden Baylor is a host. So what we're going to have to do is uncross Swarthmore up here um, and remove them from hosting. They've lost their hosting duties and we're putting Mary Harden Baylor into that spot. And so immediately we know um, that 
teams from Texas are going to have to get there. Um, and um, so what we can figure out, uh, likely they'll have Letourneau go there because uh, if you can have three teams drive to one site, they're definitely going to do that. So we know Letourneau will have to either be in the two spot or the three spot in this case. Um, and I think what I want to do is also remove Williams from hosting. Sorry, Williams. Um, because of six teams, I think we can also give Whitworth uh, a hosting spot. So what we're going to do is make sure I strike those out so I don't miss anybody. Um, we're going to try to give Whitworth a hosting spot as well, which will mean um, Linfield has to drive to Whitworth. And since they're in the same conference, they can't play each other in the first round where a red Linfield would normally be the four seed in there. But we're going to have to put them in at the three seed because they can't play Whitworth in the first round. So we've got uh, Linfield put in there just fine. Uh, so now we're going to have to drive Trinity, Texas and Letourneau um, here to this spot. And since we have Chapman and Pomona Pitzer would be our other options to fly in here. They're both green. We know Letourneau needs to go into this spot because they are in the same conference as Mary Harden Baylor and therefore can't play in the first round. And they're a blue team, which was going to slot them probably into the three or the four spot. And so we'll have to mark Letourneau there uh, because they can't play Mary Harden Baylor in the first round, which leaves Trinity, which is not an ideal first round matchup for either of these teams. Um, but Trinity's strength of schedule is not super strong, so they're going to be farther down in the rankings, and they're going to have to play Mary Harden Baylor at Mary Harden Baylor in the first round. Um, their only hope at this point is that maybe Letourneau doesn't win the ASC and doesn't get into the tournament, and that would change uh, some things a little bit and make things different, and that might get them a more favorable matchup. But given the teams that we have, this is really the only option um, to put them in, given the criteria. So now what we can do... Chapman and Pomona Pitzer, you could just fly them both up to the Northwest, um, but they're going to have to fly either way, right? So that's two flights, whether you bring them to the same place or not. And we have another flight here to Texas from somebody farther east or, or in the Midwest. Um, so it's a guaranteed three flights. So what that means is we don't have to send Pomona Pitzer and Chapman to the same place, which is really nice. Um, and what we have seen this year, and the other thing they try to match up with, Pomona Pitzer has played both Whitworth and Linfield this year. Um, and so they really like to avoid having those matchups repeated in the first round, at least. They don't want to do a rematch in the first round generally. It's not a mandate, but that is the practice that they normally do. So we will put Pomona down here in Texas as the second seed in that pod. Again, these seeds are informal. They're just used to try and balance the brackets a little bit. They're never going to be attached to them. But we want to, we want to competitively balance the brackets as much as possible. Um, and so that's what we try to do. Um, which would leave Chapman as the two seed up here in the Northwest. Now, the reason we chose Whitworth and Mary Harden Baylor, they are the two highest currently regionally ranked teams in region 10 where all of the texas and california teams are organized um and so uh they would be the ones who would be first in line to host if geography allowed them to do that which in our particular um figuring of this they're they're able to do so what we will have is we'll leave this here so what we're going to have to do is fly some team um, from the East Coast all the way out to Walla... Uh, no, that's Spokane. <laughs> Whitman's in Walla Walla. To Spokane, Washington, uh, to fill in this spot. But that can be anybody. So we're going to leave that open um, as we begin to fill in geography in some other places. So what we're looking for um, then is some geographic outliers. So Emory is down in Atlanta, and that is sometimes hard to get some teams to Emory. So I'm looking at the red teams over on this side to see who can likely drive to Emory. Barron's uh, near Erie, Pennsylvania, that's high up. Newman's in Pennsylvania, Baruch's in New York, Wilson's, I think, in Pennsylvania. Endicott's up in Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Rippon's out Wisconsin, I think. ENC is in Massachusetts, that is New Jersey. So we're gonna do our first mileage calculation to see if 
Rutgers Newark, which I doubt because that's up near New York, can get to Emory, but we're just going to do this as an example so you can see. Um, it is 855 miles, which is far too far. I knew that would be the case, but we, we need to show that. So Concordia, Wisconsin is obviously in Wisconsin. Chatham is in Pennsylvania. Uh, Fontbonne is out in St. Louis. There's a chance, oddly enough, that they could maybe get there. And so we'll give that a check. And Fontbonne is 565. So that is an option for us to get there. Um... I want to look through the rest of these um, and see if there is anybody else who can get there. Um, so I suppose we could put Fontbonne into this spot. The problem with that is going to be in the second round. We would have to move... Uh, you have to always be looking at where the second round teams are going to end up, right? And so any sort of Emory pod is going to have to probably be paired with one of these three uh, teams on the eastern part of the country, and Fontbonne is in the middle of the country. And so it's unlikely that that is going to hold up. Also, you want to say Fontbonne is going to be one of our lowest ranked teams in the criteria. You want to kind of save those um, for teams at the top, Um and so we may have to make some adjustments down here. Um, and I'm going to save that uh, for now. Um, but we do know Fompong can get there, and that is probably the only team that we would have slotted in the red. Um, what I want to do is is put Fompong up here. Um, because that is one of our lowest-ranked teams, Oshkosh is what we're calling our number one overall seed. Um, we don't ever say that officially, but that is what we're looking at. And so we want to try and, as much as possible, um, stick to some of those seedings, right? So one of the other teams, why don't we just fill in the fours now and see if we can figure that out. Um, we've got, out west, we've got teams like Concordia, Wisconsin, and northwestern Minnesota, and Ripon, who would all be pretty far to the west. Um so Ripon uh, can get to Platteville. Um, one of the things we want to check is whether the teams have played any of these top seeds. Um, I'm not showing you the window. I'm looking at that because I would fill the screen up too much. Um, but Ripon, they played lacrosse and Whitewater and Stout and Oshkosh, but it doesn't look like they have played Platteville this year. So we can put Ripon in here for Platteville. Um, and we'll remember to cross them off, because that's always the hard part, is if you've missed a team, finding the spot to put them back in again in the future. Um, so then we have Wash U, which we can do Concordia... Wisconsin. Oh, am I going to have to open my space up a little bit here? And then we can do northwestern Minnesota there at La Crosse. Um, and the reason we're doing this is largely geography at this point. We don't have a ton of these red teams that are far enough west that they'll be able to get to any of these schools um, within the 600 miles. And so we need to fill those in, which is why I didn't necessarily want to put Fontbonne to Emory, because if we do that, we don't have another team to assign to these locations. Um, and then uh, that will cause us more trouble down the road. So we always have to start with the geography. I thought Emory would be the geographic outlier to start with, but it turns out, given the lower ranked teams that we have, this is kind of where we need to go. Um, so then we can we can kind of start to fill in the rest of these in places that they can reach. We have SUNY IT up here. I think they're called SUNY Poly right now, and I have no idea what they're called on here. So this would be Tech, maybe? Uh, or maybe New York Institute of Technology? Is it under, is it under New York? Um, not New York University. Or maybe it's Polytechnic. There it is. Polytechnic Institute of New York. Can they get to Randolph-Macon? 
um, moving up from 500 to 600, as you'll see, is going to change a whole bunch of things. Well, that's under the 500 too. Um, but there's going to be a lot, especially on the East Coast, um, that will become options that we've never had in years past when it was a 500 mile limit. This, and the reason they went from five to six is they were finding that even when they uh, offered flights to teams that were kind of within that five to 600 mile range, they were choosing to bus anyway. Um, a lot of that is because often these schools are not near airports, so you're ending up on a bus for a considerable amount of time anyway. You know, it might be an hour or two to get from your location to an airport, then you're flying, and then another couple hours on a bus to get back. You might as well just get on the bus once and take the trip. Um, so Marietta is more towards the Midwest. We want to find a team maybe in Pennsylvania, Wilson, perhaps. Um, we just make sure Wilson can get to Marietta. Um, as we come along here, we'll have made some of these calculations and it'll make a little more sense. I'm, I'm almost positive Wilson can get to Marietta, but you want to, you want to make sure. Yeah, only 280 miles. That's an easy one. I shouldn't have probably had to figure that out. I do pride myself on my, the map inside my head. Um, so we're going to start to populate these things. Um, So Illinois Wesleyan is going to need somebody who can get all the way out there. And so I think Chatham can probably do that. Um, Illinois Wesleyan is, amazingly, the most eastern of those Midwest schools. Um, Marietta is technically in Ohio, which I guess is technically Midwest. But they're they're on the very southeastern part of Ohio. Um, and so they they are a good bridge for us but they're really going to be more eastern when it comes to geography so 535 from chatham to illinois wesleyan which is supremely helpful um to put them in there um all right so uh who do we want to add to these baron can get across pennsylvania to go to stockton um that's erie down to atlantic city which is an interesting one. One of the things we want to try to do is is mix up the regions as much as possible, right? You want to get teams that would not normally be able to play each other um, as you're going through, um, which is is kind of interesting. So um, the place that you're going to have problems is kind of up here with these teams that are in New England already. Um, so we might save some of that. You're probably going to just have to end up with New England teams up here. Um, trying to look at who we have left we can put enc my alma mater it'd be great if they got in the men's team at enc has never made the tournament <clears throat> we can send them right to an escac team you know i'm sure they'll appreciate that um endicott would be pretty far down the list we can send them there and somebody else westfield maybe um, in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking about which team I'm going to fly out um, to Whitworth as part of this. Um, Westfield would be a really good candidate for that. Westfield's not actually near an airport. Um, one of the things I know the committee has mentioned is they don't want someone to have to fly and then bus a long time. And so they they tend to try and, and arrange that if you're flying someplace... Um, it's going to be relatively close to an airport. Um, Westfield's a couple hours from a major airport. They're out in Western Massachusetts. Uh, you're probably going to want to try and fly somebody um, like Rutgers Newark. I bet we can send Rutgers Newark. And in this scenario, Rutgers Newark would be an upset um, conference winner. And so that would be the kind of team that you wouldn't mind flying way out there anyway because they wouldn't be high up in the rankings um you don't want to you don't want to make somebody make that trip um who who maybe has earned a different a different view of things so we can send newman up to wpi newman's in pennsylvania um with the west the east coast you know all of these are pretty connected to each other uh that leaves us with baruch and is that it? Oh, yeah, because I had to put Trinity in here. So we can send... Baruch can't go to Emory. We already figured that out, right? So we'll send Baruch there. <clears throat> and so it would be nice... Um, 
it would be nice to be able to get all of these red teams conveniently onto here. But obviously, one of them is not going to work. Oh, we have Penn State Harrisburg as well, which might be able to get to Emory. Did we even look at that one? Penn State Harrisburg to Emory. If that works out, that would be beautiful. Unfortunately, it's 721. Atlanta is not actually close to a whole lot of places. Um, so um, we're left um, with Penn State Harrisburg. Is there another red one I'm missing? I feel like my math is off, but maybe not. Um, well, yeah, so that wouldn't would fit in here. And we don't have a spot for it. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm just trying to double check that I have all the red teams where they need to go. Um, so we knew we could put Font Bon here and we could probably do that, but then there's not going to be enough teams to shift back. We're already moving a team from Pennsylvania and Chatham to Illinois. Um, so what we're going to have to do then is look at some of the lower ranked blue teams to see who could get there. Um, Barry could definitely go to Emory. Um, Roanoke could definitely get to Emory. Maryville could definitely get to Emory. Hanover is the one I'm interested in. I think Hanover would be relatively down in the overall rankings. Um, and they're at 473. So I think that's what I'm going to do is put Hanover on this spot here because they can drive to Emory. Um, and then we really do need to put two other teams there who um, can get there. Um, and so I don't think, can Wabash get down there? I think that's probably too far for Wabash. Mm, Wabash could get there, 586. So we could potentially put Wabash on that line. The problem is whether we might need them to go someplace else. Because I doubt Wabash can get... Well, Wabash could probably get to Marietta if we did that. Would they be able to get to Randolph-Macon in the second weekend? They could not. Um... Whereas could Han Hanover could, right? We're keeping them in there. Hanover is far enough. Yeah, Hanover can make it, so we can keep them there. I think I want to try and avoid something that's going to create problems down the line. Now, obviously, I'm talking about this because I've done this bracketing before, and I know once we try and match up the second weekend to minimize flights, it's going to cause some problems with where we put these teams. And so ideally, if you're making this bracket, you're going to want to put Wabash in here and move them later. I'm just trying to save us a few steps. Um, so I'm going to basically just give Emory three blue teams. Um, whoa, my font got all messed up here. Um... And so I'm just going to do Emory, Hanover, Roanoke, Maryville. I don't think Maryville played Emory this year, did they? Maryville did play Emory this year, but that would be a second round rematch. They played in November. I mean, it's not ideal, but I think this is going to help us down the road for our bracket. Um, so yeah, this is where geography sometimes gets in. So it would normally be... Uh, a three seed in a pod, they're basically getting three of them down there uh, at Emory, which is not ideal, but um, it's really going to help us with geography down the road, I promise. Um, so now we want to try and populate maybe these two seeds around, which would be the green teams that we're looking at where the green teams can go. <clears throat> um, I'm going to put Wabash at Illinois Wesleyan, just because they're a little farther towards the, the center of our, G, our, our more east. And so if you've got Chatham here already, I'd love to eventually get IWU into the Marietta pod for the second weekend. Um, and Wabash is going to help us do that if we put them on that line. Um, from here, we've got some teams that are farther west. 
we've got St. John's who really can't get a whole lot of places. Um, Minnesota is actually quite far away. So we need to put St. John's into our calculator and just make sure they can get to La Crosse, which should be a done deal, no problem, but you always want to check. Yeah, 236, that's a super close one. Um, and I don't think St. John's played lacrosse this year, right? We guess we should double check that. Um, St. John's, did they play lacrosse this year? They played Riverfall, Superior, Oshkosh, no lacrosse. Um, so we are good there. So we've got St. John's down, down on that spot. Um, we've got Platteville and Oshkosh and Wash U who are a little farther west that we need to figure out. So Hopkins, RPI are in the east. Oswego maybe could get to Illinois Wesleyan. We've already got Wabash there. Oh, Case Western. Can they drive to Oshkosh? That would be an interesting one. Case Western Reserve. Could we get them to... Uh, to Wisconsin Oshkosh that is only 523 miles so we will move Case Western Reserve which is uh, near Cleveland I don't know if it's technically in Cleveland or not but um, that'll get another team moving west which is what we want to do is is get some teams who can move west to go west so we can fill out the brackets out there um, one of the things we want to try and do is maximize the top 16 who can host obviously three teams in the wisconsin the WIAC, the wisconsin conference it's not likely that that would happen but these teams all have pretty strong resumes and so i'm working on the basis of just trying to get them as hosts we may have to pull this out and move it later but we're, we're going to work under that assumption right now and the way we do that is we get teams moving west <clears throat> so um i suppose we can put wheaton up here uh at Platteville, um, Illinois up to Wisconsin won't be too far. I don't need to check that. And I think Mount Union can get to Wash U. Um, so we just check Mount Union to Washington University in St. Louis, and we get 563. That's a little farther than I thought, but it'll work. So we put Mount Union in there, um, and they can head out to St. Louis. Um, we've got some more to figure out here. Anything else west, though? We don't really have anything west. we got to figure somebody who can get to Marietta Eastern will be able to do that. Um, we know that you can get all the way across Pennsylvania. We've done that with teams before. I think you can even get from New Jersey. Stockton and that such can get there. Um, so then we have to figure out Nazareth is in New York. Can we get Nazareth? Huh. Well, we need someone to get to Randolph-Macon. RPI would be a good bet for that there in Troy. Um, so let's see. Rensselaer to Randolph-Macon. I think that'll work now that we're up to the 600. It may be over five, but no, no, it's under five even. So that works. And that's a team that would probably not normally play Randolph-Macon. So those are some of the matchups we like to make when we're doing a mock bracket. Um, we can send Oswego over here. Um, Babson can't go to UMass. Dartmouth. Well, oh, no. Babson wouldn't go to WPI because they're in the same conference. But they could go to UMass Dartmouth. I mean, they could go to WPI. I say they couldn't. They could go to WPI because they wouldn't be playing in the first round. But the committee, if possible, tries to keep that from happening in the second round as well. It doesn't work for geography out in the West, but it usually does work for geography in the East. So we're just trying to plug a few of these in, um, making sure that I'm striking them off so that I don't lose them. Um, Hopkins, we can send up to New England. Um, and I think Nick.
vehicles can get down to Christopher Newport. I'll have to check that here in a second. Um, but yeah, like I said, these East Coast mileages work really well. Um, and that's just going down the East Coast to Virginia Beach. That's 559, so that wouldn't have worked in other years, but we can do it this year, so let's do it. Um, we can mix these teams up a good amount. Um, oh, I forgot that we had Swarthmore and Williams. We needed to shoot back in here, and they definitely have to be two seeds. Um... Yeah, so we can throw Williams in here and Swarthmore in here. I almost forgot about those. I should have done that first. Um, you you want to give them, if they're not getting the hosting that they might otherwise be entitled to, you want to get them in slightly, slightly weaker areas. Um, and so... Stockton and USJ are gonna gonna kind of be down in the rankings, and so those are places we can slot those guys in. Um, so that fills all our shoes in. So now we've got Nazareth, um, and so they're gonna be slotted into a three, which is kind of below where they should be. So I'm gonna oh got my font messed up here as well. All right, we'll fix that real quick, and I'm gonna slot them in against. Nichols, that's a weaker green team. Um, and so that would kind of be a little bit of a more even matchup if they have to be the three seed in a pod. Um, they can slot in there. So that's got all of our greens covered. I think all of our purples. We still have Penn State Harrisburg that we need to put someplace. Um... Yeah, I'm going to save that a little bit because there's going to be some places they can go. We're trying to slot in our blues now. And so we're going to have Dubuque out west. We're going to have Heidelberg and Calvin who can go west. Um, I'm going to put Dubuque here with Lacrosse, And the reason I'm doing that is we've got Minnesota, Minnesota, Iowa here at Lacrosse. So we're, this is going to be one that we definitely keep farther west. Uh, if I move them to Wash U, that would make it harder to move Wash U, like, say, into the Marietta pod for the second weekend. Um, so Dubuque is farther west. We're going to try and keep them with the farther west teams. Um, Calvin and Heidelberg. Can Calvin... Oh, we got Elmer's too. Um, that's definitely farther west. Do we put Elmer's in Wash U... Oh, you know what? I bet Barry can get to Wash U, and that would help us immensely if that is indeed the case. So we will go look. Yeah, 503. Barry coming up from, I think, Georgia? We can slot them in there, which would be helpful. Um... I'm going to put, oh, I guess I have to fix all the fonts in here. I'm going to put Calvin over here in the middle because, again, I want to have the maximum flexibility. We're going to have to move these pods to the east for the second weekend. Um, that'll give us some, some flexibility there to do that. Um, it's not ideal because I would assume Chatham, Wabash, and Calvin are all in the same... That, that whatever was Great Lakes region, but um, sometimes you just kind of have to do that if we want the geography to work out. Uh, I still have Elmhurst and Heidelberg. Can Heidelberg get to Platteville? I assume they can, but we definitely don't want to assume out there. We'll look. 
469. So they were even able to do that before. Oh. And the font's off again. I guess that's every row now. There must have just been one I didn't one set of boxes I didn't get. Um Heidelberg to Platteville, which would mean Elmhurst to Oshkosh. Um and so we've got these relatively balanced uh, in terms of the criteria. Uh, and then we can kind of plug in over here. Middlebury is, can they get all the way to Macon? Now that there's a 600 mile uh, movement, I know they definitely couldn't make it for 500. That's way too high, but they can do 600. So that'll give us another mix up. <laughs> Middlebury and RPI are not that far apart. Maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and we're going to make them drive to Virginia to play each other. Uh, sometimes that's just what happens in the tournament. Um, they'll get a nice road trip out of it. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be able to get some warm weather. It'll be like early spring for the, the people who are stuck in the cold north up there. Um, we have Utica and Susquehanna and DeSales and Hood. Um, we can send Utica over here to play Johns Hopkins. That's a matchup you probably wouldn't see in the regular season. Um, we could send... I don't want to send Yeshiva up here to USJ because that would be a potential rematch. They didn't get to play Williams this year, though. That game got canceled, so we could send them there and they could get the Williams game anyway. Well, that'll be fun. Um, and that's down in Atlantic City, so it's not too far for them. Some of the Yeshiva fans can travel. Um, they do try to take into account um, the Sabbath for Yeshiva and go to a place that can accommodate that. And I would think Stockton's a pretty big school. You'd think Atlantic City, being in New Jersey, would, would probably have some sort of Jewish community locally that could help out. Um, you know, that, that makes some sense to me. Uh, not too far away, all that kind of stuff. Um, so then we've got Susquehanna. Um, hmm. Where do we put Susquehanna? Eastern and Susquehanna are kind of in the same place. Oswego would definitely be a team that is probably not playing Susquehanna on a regular basis. Um, so we can put that through. We need somebody who can get to Marietta. We can't put Hood there because Hood and Eastern are in the same conference. We could send to Sales out there, I suppose. I don't like having all these kind of mid-Atlantic-ish teams together, but sometimes it's just what you have to deal with. We can send Hood up there. Um, and that leaves us with one team, um, oh, Penn State Harrisburg, which we could just, Penn State Harrisburg, which Swarthmore is one of those teams that should have been hosting, so giving them a red opponent in the first round is kind of fair. Um, it's not so fair for Williams getting an opponent like Yeshiva, but at, by the criteria, Yeshiva is actually, you know, pretty far down the list. Um, and you're putting them in a pod with Stockton that, you know, is probably a, a favorable matchup. So you're not like unduly penalizing them. So what we have here are pods that are maximized for geography. People can get there. I don't think um, we have repeat teams. I'm going to look at Eastern and Sales because I'm not sure if Eastern and DeSales played this year. They're close by, so we want to just check that. No, DeSales is not on Eastern's schedule. That's one thing the committee's going to look through it, make sure that none of these are rematches in the first round. Um, and so I think we're pretty good with all of these. Endicott and UMass Dartmouth would be one to check. Endicott, because they're in the same area. They 
don't have UMass Dartmouth on the schedule. Um, so we want to just kind of make sure those St. John's and Dubuque didn't. Williams and Yeshiva would have been, but they didn't get to play that game. Um, Westfield didn't play St. Joe's this year. RPI is close to Middlebury. I don't think they played this year, but we want to make sure um, that RPI didn't play Middlebury. Do, 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 do. They did not play this year. Um, so we've set all those up. Uh, now we just have to figure out how we balance um these brackets out so the one thing we have is two brackets where someone's going to have to fly we want to move whitworth to the east because then in that case if rutgers newark happens to come through and somehow win that whole pod um they could drive the second weekend so um we're going to set this up based on geography first i don't think can St. Joe's get to Marietta. So that's one to check here. St. Joe's of Connecticut to Marietta College. That is 617. So we know we have to move St. Joe's out of there. And Dartmouth is even farther than St. Joe's. So I'm going to move the, that bracket off to the side for the moment. Um... CMU can probably get there, as could Stockton. Um, yeah, and I don't really want to put either of those teams in there. So what I'm going to do for the time being is move Stockton up to this four line. So again, this is Stockton that by the criteria would probably be a three seed in a in a bracket if we were going by the way that you would traditionally use it in the um the d1 tournament but we're going to move them up there because then i think what i set up is that this wash U group can come over here and i'm going to move cmu temporarily off to the side because I believe I'm going to have to double check these distances, but I think all of the teams here, I got to check Williams to Marietta. Is that something that can happen? Oh, Williams can't get to Marietta. Um, so what I'm going to do then is just swap these out. I'm going to put Swarthmore in there, and I'm going to put Williams where Swarthmore was. Yeshiva would love to play Swarthmore. I think they've tried to schedule each other in the past, and that hasn't worked, so that would be good. Um, all these teams can definitely get there. We have to look at WashU and Concordia and Barry. So Washington and St. Louis, 543, they can get there. Concordia of Wisconsin, 587, they can get there, and then I'm pretty sure Barry can do that. Yeah, all right, so what we have then is we've got a full pod of teams here that are relatively ranked, right? Like Marietta, IWU, WashU, Stockton. You'd get an IWU, WashU rematch potentially in the Sweet 16, but, you know, that's not too early for that to happen. Um, Stockton makes sense as a potential Sweet 16 matchup for Marietta. Every one of these teams can drive to Marietta. Now, obviously, if Marietta doesn't come through, you're going to be hosting in a different place that you may throw off your bracket a little bit, but we only had three flights in the first round. So you're going to be willing to take a few more of those chances in the second round to be able to do that. So what that leaves us with is um, Randolph-Macon. I don't want to keep all the New England teams 
together. Um, and Emery's going to have to drive to Randolph-Macon no matter what. Um, so I'm just going to... Um, why can I not... All right. I'm going to move these guys out for the time being as well. I don't know if you can see off to the side where I'm putting them, but I promise they're there and I'll move them back. Um, so we're going to put Emery in here because geographically they're really going to need to do that. Um, and we already checked Hanover can get to Randolph-Macon on the drive. Um, Lacrosse definitely can't, so we're going to have to move those out west. And really, we're going to have to stick Platteville over there, at least for now. Um, I don't personally have um, an issue putting all three WIAC teams in the same quadrant. Um, one, you'd have the two lower-ranked teams that might have to meet in the Sweet 16, and then there would potentially be another WIAC matchup in the Elite Eight, which, you know... People say that isn't quite fair, but at, at the same time, you know, they, they got to play out somehow. Um, and I think if it helps us balance some of the other regions, I'm, I'm not entirely, entirely opposed to it. Um, so this leaves us, I don't want to put the Whitworth pod there. I want to move that to bring it all the way to like to Wesleyan. So we know, well, I got to check if UMass Dartmouth can get all the way to Randolph-Macon. Um, that might be different. We'll have to see. Randolph-Macon isn't too far west, so it's quite possible. 527, yeah. So I'm just going to put uh, the UMass Dartmouth pod here. Um, and then the Whitworth pod. I'm going to slot that in here. Um, oh, now I have to spread this out a little bit to make sure that the long Rutgers Newark name fits in there. And I don't need as much space over here anymore. This is the anal retentive part of the episode. So... Um, CNU, who's already been on a two-line, would slot back into a two-line. Um, and so that keeps all of our twos as twos somewhere. And it keeps all of our ones as ones somewhere. And we've had to move these threes around a little bit. Um... So essentially, Stockton has moved from a 3 to a 4, and USJ has moved um, from a 4 to a 3, which are not outrageous moves given um, how our geography works. And so now we look at least to see... Could everybody get to Wesleyan? Obviously, Whitworth, Chapman, Linfield. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to underline those because they're going to have to fly no matter where they go in the second weekend. Um, and then it'll be the same thing for UMHB and Trinity. I mean, potentially, if we put Laterno in the same pod as Wash U, they could potentially host something there, but um, that's just... It's unlikely, and I'm not going to move everything around just to create a chance for a three seed to potentially host um, again later on. Um, and so, can all of these teams get to Randolph-Macon? Do we check Endicott? We did already, right? We'll do that again just in case. Endicott to Randolph-Macon is 558, so that's doable. Babson's closer, Hood's closer, we know all three of these teams can get there, Westfield's closer, Williams is closer, Harrisburg's closer, um, so all those teams can definitely get there, we already checked all the Marietta teams, Wesleyan, those teams are going to have to fly anyway, CNU to Wesleyan was what we started with, 
that was our example at the beginning. Um, all these teams are going to be close enough, so that works. Um, and then all these teams are out west, so Oshkosh, we already know Case Western can get there. That's where, well, they wouldn't have to on the second weekend. The problem comes, you say, well, we got some upsets. Can everybody still get to the same place? Um, obviously, we wouldn't, we would not want to necessarily put all three WIAC teams in the same place. The problem we have, I don't think Platteville can get to Marietta. And so the one advantage we do have, I'm going to check this here, Marietta. Platteville and Marietta is 666. That is just out of the picture. Can Lacrosse? I don't think, I think Lacrosse is farther away, right? So that wouldn't help. And we're not going to send Oshkosh and Marietta to the same place. Um, but like Wheaton and Heidelberg, I don't know about Ripon. Would Ripon be able to get there? Or is it Ripon? I've heard people say different things. Ripon, Ripon, I don't actually know. I think Ripon is a very cool name. So they wouldn't be able to. Um, and Chatham, I don't think, could get to Oshkosh. The crazy thing with um, checking Chatham and Oshkosh here, I think that wouldn't work. That's 640. But Wabash and Calvin certainly could. The crazy thing about this year is Illinois Wesleyan is going to have Sweet 16 matchups with just about any place, any place you put them, right? Like, they played so many good teams. Um, we could potentially switch this IWU pod and the Platteville pod. It might require flying Platteville to Marietta, which is... I mean, a beast of a <laughs> of a trip. Marietta is not really close to any major airports. Um, but it would balance the pod a little bit. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I think giving the Wisconsin teams hosting opportunities that they earned in the first round is probably a trade-off they would take over having to play conference opponents a, a little earlier in in the process, right? Um, and so what you would want to probably do in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to leave it like that because we're not actually finishing this out. And you could switch Platteville and IW. The only thing you'd have is potentially um, some extra flights if Chatham got through or if Platteville or Ripon got through, which, again, we're, we're working on only three flights in the first round and potentially no more than two in the second. And so I, I think six... Overall flights wouldn't be terrible if you had Platteville going through. And so that committee might choose to do that. This, what we have here, would certainly be minimizing. And again, the trade-off, getting all of these teams to host in the first round, I think they're willing to take the potential rematches with conference opponents a little earlier. Um, because at that point, you've made it through the first weekend and you've had the advantage of that. Um, and again, none of these teams are guaranteed to be there, right? You, ha you have some a little different, right? Letourneau's not in this it changes all the geography, changes everything around. I was just trying to walk you through the process of what it looks like to put a bracket together. And ultimately, you'd want to put this whole Oshkosh column and the whole Wesleyan column together. So that would be like the one and the four overall seeds. They would be on one side of the bracket. And then you would have the Randolph, Macon, and Marietta uh, columns on the other side of the bracket as the two and the three seeds, um, potentially those four meeting in Fort Wayne. Um, we'll go through all this again once we have a predictive field um, in about nine or ten days here. But hopefully this takes you to the process. If you have questions, um, you can add some comments to the YouTube video where this will be or reach out to me on Twitter. Um, this is, is kind of an example of what the process looks like and where teams may end up. But again, uh, caveat. You know, if the teams in the tournament change, it radically changes how geography works, radically changes how we do all this. Um, thanks for paying attention. Hopefully this was helpful. I've been Ryan Scott, lead columnist for D3Hoops.com.